exciting, and it's also something that, uh, are you recording this? Oh, thank you very much. Can I sing? Let's sing it. <laughs> Let's hear, oh, there you are. Okay. okay. So maybe a bit back. Your faces. Okay. okay. <laughs> Economics <coughs> are very easy because economics are basic are based on the rational behavior of everyone. So uh, if you just understand your rational behavior, you are endowed to understand economics. And this is the basic of uh, what we have what we require in order to understand economics. We have to understand how do we do we be, how do we behave? And if we understand that, uh, it will be easier to understand economics. Okay? And we will try to prove that. And the beautiful thing about that is that uh, already four Nobel Prize winners, economists, the Nobel Prize in economics, have demonstrated that uh, the logic of uh, the economy of the country, it is basically the same logic of the, of, of the same economic, the economical logic of the person, of one single person, only that it is a more complex system. But uh, apart from that, the decisions are taken basically on the same, on the same uh, basis. Okay? And, that, uh, and because of that, you should not be afraid of economics. The only thing that you need is to understand your rational, uh, behavior and uh, <clears throat> that is the first thing that we need to to keep in mind okay? uh, the other things that we need to are the basic concepts in economics and uh, we will start oh let me see if I if this can work like this why no how about like this no and uh, like this no. Okay, and uh, I'm going to do to eight. No, 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 no. Laser. Wow. This is something. <laughs> I like toys. Never mind. I will use my arrows if I find it here. Okay, uh, this is something that you have to understand. Economics is basically supply, demand, and prices. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, sounds, it might sound uh, scary, but it is not. And it is also important to know this because at the end, okay, you can explain any economic problem by the behavior of behavior and relationship between uh, supply, demand, and prices. Okay? But most importantly, between demand and supply, uh, you will see this schedule, and uh, you will find that uh, the forces of demand are opposite to the forces of supply. Here we have. Uh, uh, a quantity, and here we have prices, okay? And the, the rationality of the demand is that the lower the price, the more we demand. Whereas the rationality of the supply is the higher the price, the higher we are willing to supply, okay? Is that very easy to understand because that's a basic logic of the of the individual. And that's how we behave. If it is cheaper, we want to buy more. Okay? Uh, if it is cheaper, we want to sell. We want to produce less. Okay? Uh, the thing is that the forces of demand and supply always find, and they find that what it's called the market equilibrium. And uh, the market equilibrium will give us the price of equilibrium, the price of the uh, of, 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 that, of the goods and services and the quantity that will solve the market. Okay? That's a basic scene. It looks scary, but you're going to see that it's not scary. 
Now, what is economics about? Okay, for what you know, what would you say that is economics about? What is the objective of economics? Um, economy. Hmm? It's about uh, economy. Obviously. Okay, but what is the objective of an economy? Um, how the market works. What for? What would you say that it is the main objective of an economy? How about you? You? That the people. What? In that market. Sorry? I think it is the people within that market. What do you mean the people? Uh, it could be individuals like us. Okay. It also can be the organization. That, uh, but uh, the objective of the economy, I mean, the reason why economy, the economy exists is because of what? Uh, the need of exchanges. The need of exchanges? Do you have to need to exchange anything? Uh, that's I mean, how it begins. Okay, when you get born, uh -huh. you just have your first impression is, I need to exchange, I need to exchange. Is that correct? Uh, no, but when I grow up, I'll definitely find... Yes, but uh, you can go... Uh, I mean, you can just start explaining by the first thing that you do when you get born. Okay? What is... What do, would you say it is uh, the objective of economics? Of maybe, the economy? Maybe it's to assess how the economy works for its people in that specific country. And how what do you mean works? What do you mean by okay, uh, works? reacts to certain situations politically, how... It is much easier than that. Okay? What is the first thing that uh, a child does when it's for? He cries. Hmm? Cry. Cry. Why? Wants something. Because wants something. But that's... Maybe the not. baby wants. What? To satisfy a need. What need? It doesn't say I'm hungry, but it's how does the baby say I'm hungry? <coughs> Did you agree with me? Mm -hmm, yes. Okay. And uh, then what is the baby expressing? A need. The need for food. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, how does the baby solve that? <laughs> Okay? Is that clear? Did you agree? No. Okay? Well, it is as easy as that. The objective of the economy is to satisfy needs or need satisfaction. Okay? And the need satisfaction or the satisfaction of needs is what we call demand because in order to satisfy needs, Okay, you demand goods and services for satisfying those needs. So we have here the two things which are very important. The first thing important. Oh, let me use this. The first thing that it is important it is. The first thing that it is important it is that uh, the satisfaction of needs can be called demand. Okay. Actually, it is the demand, or creates the demand. But the other thing that we have to bear in mind, it is this, the objective of the economy. The objective of the economy. This is very important to bear in mind, because the economy exists, because you have to satisfy needs. Okay? Is that clear? Yes. So this is the first concept. The objective is need satisfaction, and need satisfaction is the demand. I have to add something. The needs are endless. What does it mean? It means that when you satisfy one need, another one is created. At least another one is created. And it is an endless process. Okay? It is absolutely impossible to satisfy all of your needs. You have to, you have to be a monk. Okay? And perhaps uh, the monk okay, 
there in the Himalayas next to the Everest. The only thing that requires is just a little leap. Okay, and contemplate nature, and that's all. Okay, but uh, that could be interesting, but uh, not by Sire 5. Okay, I, I don't think that that's enough. I mean, it's okay if you agree with the monk, but uh, even the monk has a necessity, the necessity of that leave. Okay, and it has to demand it. Okay? The supply would be very easy because the only thing that has to do is just walk in the forest and get the leaf and eat. Okay? But uh, most of the people is not like that. And uh, you start perhaps by eating a banana, but after that you want to a different taste. Okay? And you go forth and forth and you never end with your, 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 your necessities. You satisfy one and immediately it creates another. Let's go to a different perspective. The essence of the economy is the production of goods and services to satisfy the needs. So we know that the objective is that need satisfaction. Okay? But now we know an additional thing is that the essence of the economy is the production of goods and services. And we have to understand by, for, by production everything that has to be done in order to allow that the goods and services are able to satisfy the needs. Okay? It means that uh, production has to be understood as a production itself. It means the transformation of natural resources or any resource into good and service, transportation, distribution, and then commercialization. All of that comes into the category of production. Okay? Goods and services are everything that might be needed to satisfy a need, a necessity. Is that clear? If there is something that you don't agree or you don't understand, please interrupt me and say that because the idea it is not to let me talk like crazy and you stay there as if you were looking at a movie. Okay? The idea is to interact and to take advantage of this for your life and for debating. So we know now two things, the essence of economics, and we know what is the objective of economics. In fact, because of the essence of economics, which is production, that's the reason why when you want to describe any economy, you describe that economy okay, by the figures related to the production. How do you describe an economy? Well, the gross domestic product of that country is that and that. The gross domestic product grew this much and this much, or stagnated, or whatever, because it synthesizes the economy. Okay? And, uh, and uh, this is called supply. Okay? The production of food and services to satisfy needs, it is called supply. Now we know what is demand and what is supply. And we also know something very important, which is what is the objective of economics. Okay? And we know now how, what is the, the, the main aspect of economics or the essence of economics. Okay? Let's continue. After that, we go to how do, how do you get goods and services? Well, in order, in order to get goods and services, in order to produce goods and services, you require resources. And there are many types of resources. Natural resources, intermediate resources, okay? But the most important of all of them, it is a human resource. And this is key to understand. 
This is a very, very important because the human resource and the resources in general, but basically the human resource is what can convert any other resource into a good or a service, into an economic good or service. What does it, and, and behind that, it is also something very more important than that. It is that, uh, that only the human resource is able to bring value to the economy. Okay? What do I mean by that? What is the value of a banana? Nutritional. Hmm? Nutritional value? Or no. What value. is the value of a banana? I mean, you go... I mean, how much do you pay for a banana? It's socially constructed by humans. I think it's a fictional concept, by the way. No, no, it is not a fictional concept. It is a very true concept. Okay? The banana itself doesn't have any value at all. Oil itself doesn't have any value at all. There are thousands, millions of bananas all around in the trees. There are, I mean, below the, the below here, there might be millions and millions of barrels of oil. Okay, but they are worth absolutely nothing. Why? Because they do not serve for satisfying a need. Okay? They require, they are just natural resources. They require human, the human resource, human intervention in order to convert that resource into a good and service able to satisfy a need. And uh, in that conversion is where the value appears in economics. In the economy, I mean, is where the value appears in, in, in the economy. When I'm talking about the value, I'm making a little bit of separation between value and price, but they are very much related, okay? And uh, you see always that here in the production of bread and satisfying the need of the consumer, you get uh, wheat. It, it is converted into, into uh, wheat flour, but there is also the producer of wheat and the producer of uh, wheat flour and the producer of bread. Okay? And the important thing, it is not the wheat, it is not the flour, it is precisely the, the, the people that are able to convert those resources into the final product that satisfies a need. This is extremely important, okay? This is extremely important because it is because the, 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 the capabilities of the human resource are also infinite, are worthy. The, the difference between the difference between the human resource and the rest of the animal kingdom is that we can do two things that the rest of the animal kingdom cannot do. We can create and we can love. Okay? But in this case, it is just a matter of create. But now that we, look, that we talk about love and creation, the capabilities of the, of the human resource, uh, always bear in mind this. What it is not explained by economics can only be explained by Freud. Okay? Think about that and try to, and, and you will see how it is always illustrated. What cannot be explained with economics will be explained by Freud. Okay. We have the objective of economics. We have the essence of economics, and now we have the most important element in economic, in an economy, which is the human resource. Then we come to the relationship between them, and
And there is a basic law in economy, which is the relationship between demand and supply. Here, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, and there is an O there because O is the, the, the letter for offer, which is the oferta in Spanish. Okay, in English it should be supply, which is the same as offer. Okay, but that's okay. But the basic relationship, it is that if the demand is bigger than the supply, the prices will go up. Okay, and this is very easy to understand. I have, uh, I have, I love studying, I love learning, and uh, I have studied in different universities in the world. I, I studied in, in Chechi University in Taipei, I studied in Glasgow University, I studied at Cornell University, in my university in Caracas. Some of my professors were Nobel Prize, uh, Nobel Prize winners in economics, like Paul Samuelson and Franco Modigliani or Stan Shamansky as well. But uh, none of them taught me as much about the economy as my daughter. Okay? Because observing at her allowed me to understand that economics is not made by the, the big economists. It is made by your natural behavior. Okay? And my daughter showed me the nature of needs, for example, for instance, when I remember once that we went to the supermarket to get uh, to to buy our our, our food for, for the week, <coughs> and uh, she saw a new Barbie, Barbie doll, <coughs> and she told me, "Daddy, buy me that doll, that Barbie doll. I don't have that. I like it. It is wonderful." And I say, "Oh, we can't. We don't have money." And she tells me, "Yes, we have. We came here to buy." in this supermarket. Oh yes, but we came here to buy food because we need to buy food to satisfy our needs. And she told me, I need that door. I need that door. So she was absolutely right. It made me understand and she was it made me understand this basic difference between necessities or needs. Okay? And I had to try to argue with her about that. Okay? There are m many other teachings in that, uh, in that, uh, in that example. Okay? Because the first thing that she told me is when I told her we don't have money, she told me, yes, go to the window, the bank window, and take uh, money out of there. And I had to explain to her that it is not a window, it is not a magic window, but that's out of the question. I mean, the important thing it is about the needs. But she also showed me how the relationship between demand and supply works. And it was very easy. He never studied economics. She was only six years old. But she collected these stickers for the albums. Uh, it was precisely an album from a Barbie, different situations of Barbie. And, uh, and I, one day we were driving her from school to our home and uh, I stopped at uh, the store. I bought her a bunch of envelopes with the stickers and we were, while we were driving home, all of a sudden I was striking by uh, a horrendous uh, yelling. Daddy! And I was so much scared. My heart almost stopped because I said, what is happening to my loved daughter? And she said, what, daughter, what happens to you? I said, and she says, number seven, daddy, number seven. Okay, and so, nobody has number seven, daddy, nobody has number seven. Oh, my daughter, okay, thank you very much. This is wonderful, okay? Wow, this is great, and that. And uh, we continue driving. And almost when arriving at home, she all of a sudden goes again, Daddy! Another number seven, Daddy! Okay. 
again, the heart jumped out of, of, of my, my mouth, and that, uh, at the end, I relaxed. And, oh, good. Okay, I didn't say anything to her. But uh, I didn't have to explain it. I, I never took her to the Chicago Boys, uh, uh, Ruffles School of uh, Economics, liberal, uh, or to the phone Mrs. Extreme Liberal uh, School of Economics, or Milton Friedman, Free to Choose, or something like that. I didn't have the need to do that. I didn't take her to the CIA in order to make her to understand capitalism or market forces. He just, at the next day, jumped out of the car, running with number seven in her hand. Look what I have here. Look what I have here. OK? Very happy. And all of the rest of the girls came around her. And what do you think that happened? There's a tension on her. Yes, and so? She became popular. Sorry? She became popular. She had no, not only popular, because she had the, the card like this. She had what people wanted. People started to, to offer her to exchange it. I give you two, I give you four, I give you eight, I give you ten, I give you twelve, I give you... They reached 47. Okay? Stickers for that one, because nobody else had that one. Okay, and then the government, myself, intervened the market because some girls started to offer her money, and I said, no, I'm not going to corrupt her. Take the 47 uh, others and uh, sold to that one. But think about this: how much does one of those stickers? What is the value of one of those stickers? In paper, they all have the same value. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So, why were people willing to pay 47 for one? Because the demand was so high. Because the demand was so high. The scarcity. And the supply was so little that people that wanted that the need to have that. I want to have that because I want my iron full. Okay? Made the price to increase. And it is an absolutely natural behavior. The price that you are willing to pay, okay, it is depends upon the availability of goods in the market or which is the same, the supply. So this is basic economics. Okay? It also explains why oil it is that expensive now. Okay? Well, I have a question. Isn't all are all prices regulated to rise? How? Like they don't release enough oil. Like they store oil in. Um... At the end, it is exactly the same. They are regulating the supply, okay, for different reasons, okay, and uh, that makes demand bigger than supply, and that's because that's the reason why oil prices are going up. Anyhow, there is not enough oil in the world today okay, to compensate both of them. Okay, the price will keep uh, going up until a new source of energy is developed. And believe me, very soon, because of the high prices, of the hiking prices of oil as energy, okay, very soon we will see a different source of energy, cheaper and more efficient. Same as happened with coal. Okay? Coal used to be the, source of, the main source of energy. And what do you think that happened? The world run out of coal? No. The price of coal, when it increased, made feasible and made more efficient to exploit oil. In the 70s, the increase of the price of, of, of oil justified okay, go and search oil in deeper, uh, on deeper places, okay? because it was justified then. 
but now it has increased so much that the cost of producing energy by other sources, more efficient, more clean, less damaging to the environment, very soon will make the substitution of oil by another source of energy. Demand and supply. Everything, every time that you see this, this red arrow, okay, that is a hint on how to use this how, as a, as a, to construct debate arguments. There are many others where I didn't use the, 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 the arrow. You can just use economic arguments by saying, well, but it happens that the, the objective of economics is to satisfy the needs of the people. Okay? Or you can go and say, uh, well, but the essence of economics, it is the production of goods and services. Okay? But the, the idea, the general idea about the motions is how it, the motion, will affect demand, supply, or prices. And this is a good line of argumentation, an important line of argumentation. Okay? So you want to build economic arguments, think always how the motion affects demand or supply, and just express them. But is that the motion will affect supply by uh, diminishing that? It will diminish. Remember the demonstration debate? What was my, my most important argument? If you make people, if you make the companies, okay, to pay for the internships, the supply of uh, internships will decrease because it will be very costly to the companies. And because of that, everyone will be, uh, will, will have a damage, okay? Because there will not be enough opportunities for people Okay? to get experience through internships. Remember that? Okay. So how it affects demand, how it affects supply. In this case, it was affecting supply, the supply of internships. There are two other concepts which are very important in economics. These two concepts are Investment and productivity. These concepts are so important, so important, that uh, you have always to keep to bear them in mind. Investment is basically, or investment always leads to the increase of the production capacity. Okay? The investment leads to the increase of the production capacity. Capacity. It means when you invest, you will be able to produce more. It doesn't mean that you're going to produce more. It means that you will be able to produce more. Okay? When you invest. And that is why I say that those are the bones of the, of the economy. Okay? It is the structure of the economy. Okay? And uh, so it is very important it is very important to keep an eye on investment. And uh, you will see down here how will they be affected with the motion. How will investment is affected by that motion? Okay? Does it uh, encourage investment or does it, what's the opposite of encouraging? Discouraging. Discouraging. Okay? And the other concept is productivity. Productivity, it is an extremely important concept, not only in economics, but also in life. Because what is productivity? Most people confuse productivity with production. They are related, but uh, they are not the same. Productivity, it is the efficiency of the production. You can produce efficiently it means productively, or you can produce unproductively, inefficiently. Okay? 
in general terms, the productivity it is it is related to obtaining more out of the same or less effort or resources. Okay? You are productive when you do things better than the others. Okay? And that, that is important for any person. What will make you a valuable resource? What will make you someone who deserves a better payment than any other like you? Will be your productivity. Will be what, what you can give to the person who is hiding you different than the others. In sports, it's very clear. Why Ronaldo uh, gets <laughs> such a high payment? Okay? Or Messi? Or whatever? Okay? Because they do what the rest of the players do not do. They play more efficiently. They play better than the rest. Okay? So that's a productivity. Okay? If you are more productive than the, the person who graduated with you or the person who worked with you, you have more possibilities of getting uh, an improvement in your job and your salary. Okay? It can also, it's important also, the companies who, who perform better are the companies who are more productive. Okay? The, the, the companies that do the same thing with less resources or more efficiently. And it is also a key concept for the countries. The key for the success of any country, of any country's economy, it is its productivity. Okay? The higher the productivity, the best performance that you will have. Okay? And because of that, the secret to keep improving the secret to progress, it is productivity. Productivity can be called the muscles of the economy. Better fit, because you will be able to do it better. Then, then, to develop economic arguments. Okay? You can just think about how that motion will affect investment or how that motion will affect productivity. The government of my country recently recently were, had a lot of advertisement saying uh, our economy is growing from this figure to this figure. This is great. This is a great achievement of the revolution and so forth. And I wrote an article saying Okay, uh, I am sorry to say that I am also growing. Okay, and the growth that the government it is claiming, it is like my growing. I am growing in my abdomen. Okay, I am getting a lot of fat. I am developing a huge tummy. Okay, and that is not a healthy growing. Okay, a healthy growing requires muscles requires bonds okay and that is not what is happening in this economy why because it is growing okay but the investment it is decreasing and the productivity it is decreasing it means we are doing very bad we are doing very bad it is better not to increase the production but to but to, uh, to have more investment or to have more productivity than the opposite. Okay? So this is key and this is a very useful source for economic arguments. Then we come to another thing, which is also a very important source of economic arguments. Okay? The difference between supply and demand always creates scarcity. Okay? And uh, a key concept in life and also in, in economics 
it is the concept of choice or decisions and you will always have choices and you will always have to take decisions okay choices of options okay and in order to make these choices and these options you need to have in mind very clear the priorities okay? you have to wear in mind very clear your priorities the priorities of your country the priorities of your of your economy the priorities of yourself as a person okay? but this leads okay, to understand another key concept. I don't know if you remember the, the demonstration debate after I told uh, thank you very much to the, to the uh, Prime Minister for showing us what cannot be done, which is if uh, you start with a wrong premise, it will lead you to a wrong conclusion. Remember that? Yeah. And then I said, the thing is that the opportunity cost of that motion, it is extremely high. And then I had to explain the opportunity cost. It is what you are paying, okay? for the benefits that it might bring. Okay? The cost of the benefits that, you, that, that is bringing. Okay? And that, that is the other concept which is basic in economics. It is fundamental in economics. The concept of opportunity cost. When you make a choice, you are renouncing to other options. <coughs> okay? In that case, when you decide to pay the internships, you are renouncing to not paying the internship and to the consequences that it brings. Okay? And uh, the consequences of paying means the decrease of supply of internships. Okay? It, they try to demonstrate that, they, that the interns deserve to be paid. Okay? But the thing is, that uh, they will lose most of the internships because they will not have enough supply of internships and at the end it will be worse for them. The opportunity cost will be too high. The cost of the decision, of that decision, it is too high. It means that the costs are bigger than the benefits and this is something that we have always to evaluate. And there is another fact which is important. When we talk about the opportunity cost, what we are implying is that there is always an opportunity cost. Sometimes it is worth to pay the opportunity cost because the benefits are more than the cost. But uh, in, 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 in some other cases, not. And uh, this is what we have to evaluate. And this is because there is no free lunch. There is always someone paying for what appears to be a free lunch. Okay? Our government says, okay, our government says, and this is an example, we are very good because we are giving to the, to the poor, okay, a subsidized food. Okay? It means low price food to the people. Okay? And the people is happy. Look, we can pay for this. Actually, someone is paying for that. And in this case, it is these people, these very same people, the one who is paying. Why? Because the cost, the opportunity cost of that low price food most probably will be the job opportunities that they are missing, okay, because the economy, it is being, I mean, it is affecting the economy in the efficiency of the economy or because 
perhaps it was more important than that to give them better education so they will be better enabled to solve the problem by themselves very soon. Or perhaps just give them better health because that way they will be healthier to face their challenges by themselves. So there is, there is no free lunch. Every decision always brings with it okay, a cost, an opportunity cost. And uh, this is another source of elements, okay? Because all decision always brings winners and losers. All decision always brings winners and losers. So either way, there is no red uh, arrow here, but uh, should be there. Evaluate always who's a winner, who's a loser, and compare them. And the opportunity cost of these winners it is the effect on these losers. Is that clear? And the other thing, it is the effects of that, of, of that cost in the short run it, as compared to the effects in the long run. In many cases, in many cases, okay, uh, when you take a decision, it may be good for the short run, but very bad in the long run. Like for instance, what I told you, having cheap food, okay? If it goes, if it doesn't allow you to have better education, in the long run, it will be worse for you because you will have food today, but you will not have in the, in the future the capability, okay? To, to, to maintain that food cheap and you will not have either the possibility of buying that food by yourself and you will have to depend always on the grace of the, of the generosity of uh, Mr. State. Okay. So evaluate always winners and losers in the opportunity cost. Think about effects in the short run and the long run okay, as part of the opportunity cost. And we will finish by the start of the next presentation, which will be where do money come from. Okay? Lots of arguments can be made out of this, how it will be financed. Because money doesn't come out of the trees. Okay? Where do the funds will come from? And this is another another tip for building economic arguments in a debate. Okay. And to answer these questions, or to understand better this question, it is the subject of the next uh, elective, which you will see it there. It is called, Where Do Money Come From? Okay. I hope that it was useful. Anything else that you might need, please do not hesitate Asking, I am, as I have told you, I am here.